Hello and welcome to another RPG review. This time I'm reviewing the role-playing game White Hack in its second edition. Now, I should start with a full disclosure. I received a review copy of this game. Did not pay for it myself. Though it's not a huge expenditure. At the time of recording, uh, there's a promotion running where you get this uh, softcover booklet version for only $5. If you want a hardcover version, that's 20 bucks. Why is it so cheap? Well, it's only 64 pages. But within those 64 pages, you get rules, you get an example of a campaign setting, and you get two adventures. What then is this? What kind of game is this? It's, it's definitely a part of the so-called OSR, the old, old school renaissance. Uh, they, um, it's um, said to have a zero e feel, zero edition, and the very not name White Hack, of course, um, alludes to it being a hack of uh, the white box. So, this is a very old school fantasy role-playing game in the DD. You can tell by the, the names of the characteristics that it's sort of D&D inspired. However, it's also updated and modernized in its mechanics. It's trying to keep the old school feel, but with new school rules. Uh, as in, uh, if you're familiar with the real old school, I mean, those really old editions of D&D, they had tons of different mechanics, lots of different subsystems that barely interacted with each other and they resolved different situations in different ways. Uh, this game takes the more modern day approach of trying to unify mechanics and have a, a um, well, a unified uh, system for, for uh, whenever you need to roll dice. Let's go through the contents a little bit, shall we? It starts out with character creation. It, it doesn't start out with trying to tell you what a role-playing game is. It kind of... It, it, there is a part later where you it gets a little bit into that, but here in Chapter 2, the game, where we look at the process of playing and the game rules, but there is half a page about what what the game is supposed to run like. This is for experienced role players, mostly. Now, characters have the six um, traditional stats. They gain experience points and they gain levels, so it's level based. It's a d20 based system. It only uses d20s and d6s, interestingly. So you don't need all those other polyhedral dice. You have a character class, but the, here's the interesting thing. There are only three classes. The deft, the strong, and the wise. Essentially, anybody who makes their living, or rather, who, who gets by in the world through their wits is, is known as a deft. This includes, you know, thieves, rangers, monks, uh, what else do they have as examples? Spies, marksmen, assassins. Yeah. The strong are your typical warrior types. You know, the fighters, the barbarians, the uh, knights and paladins and whatnot. And the wise are, of course, the magic users. Uh, you can see here the character sheet, which is very simplified. You make a character that how do you tell one deft or one strong character from another well you define groups that it belongs to and that the groups you belong to influence what kind of dice rolls are easier for you and and these are the kind of dice rolls that are not combat related your combat stats are given through your class table and each class has certain special uh, traits. The deft 
ha have these these uh, abilities to to hit easier, do more damage from combat advantage. The strong have various can get more combat options than others, and as I said, the wise can do magic. But you you uh, you tell different characters apart mostly by things such as species, vocations, or affiliations. And this is this is a very modern concept. It's it's essentially the idea of getting skills through your background, such as uh, we have in Thirteenth Age, or or as an option in in D and D Five E. You of course have an equipment table. There is uh, uh, some stuff about getting experience, saving throws, uh, skill rolls. Uh, a rather um, simple system. It's a d20 roll where you roll under or equal to stats. Most of the time, um, the, the, the DM says that a certain task is, for example, a strength roll, and you have to roll your strength or under. And it's the same in combat. You roll your attack value, which is given through your class table. And you have to get that number or under, but also above the opponent's armor class, which is a number from zero and up. And that's the interesting thing. That the table here, which is given on the character sheet, is actually a conversion table for armor classes. The top line is for white hack armor classes. And the three rows under that are for different ways of expressing armor class in different editions of D&D. So you can easily, at a glance, uh, compare them, uh, convert them. And, well, combat is rather simply, but sufficiently covered. There is a chapter on damage and death, poisons, magic. Magic is interesting. Magic is kind of freeform and improvisational. And it's, it's kind of only limited by the social contract between players and, and, and Game Master. Though it's supposed to solidify over time. And here's the thing. What powers magic in this system is your hit points. You don't have... It's not a Vancean spell system. It's more like a, a, a magic point system or spell point system, except that the spell points are your hit points. You have to expend your life force to to power your magic. And if you want to create a magic item, you have to spend permanent hit points. So that's usually not something player characters do. We have several gameplay examples which illustrate how the rules work, which is very useful. Chapter 3, running the game is for the Game Master or Dungeon Master, and it has a good deal of, of suggestions about how to set up a campaign and how what the sort of feel of the game is supposed to be, and how to construct adventures, and they have something called a traditional toolkit, which are notes for how to use these rules with old, uh, old school uh, dungeon modules and the like. And you even have an option for what they call traditional magic, where you have a spell list. Then there's some optional character classes that, you know, are for more advanced players. There is even some talk about what happens beyond levels. Uh, the levels only go to 10 in this game. You don't advance in, in stats after that. So these notes about what to do after level 10 are all about um, the social aspects of the setting. About, for example, you can allow the players control over some aspect of the game world. Or they can start getting involved with the gods. The next chapter, chapter is Monsters, and Monsters are presented very simply. These are all the monsters in the book, on, on two pages, and the list only has it has three stats. Hit dice, armor class, move, and then special uh, abilities, which you have to sort of adjudicate sort of by ear. Um, 
the things such as attack values and, and saving throws are based on your hit dice. And also how much XP they're worth. There, there's a table for that. Damage is simply by weapon or, or, or just the natural damage of 1d6. If, if you know a lot about original D&D, everything did 1d6 back then. And in this game, most things do 1d6 maybe plus or minus 1 or 2. And the reason uh, damage doesn't scale up very much is that hit points don't either. You never gain hundreds of hit points in this game. But this may seem simple, but there's also some really interesting ideas here about boss monsters and how they can get extra actions. If something is qualified as a boss, it gets extra actions. It has stages where you defeat... Uh, the, mons, the boss once, but then transforms into a different form and it keeps fighting. <laughs> this is more reminds me more of a video game. So this is like Final Fantasy or something, but it's it's a cool idea, and I kind of like it. Then, oh, they have some examples of how you can detail monsters a bit more if you like for your setting. There's a chapter about magic artifacts where they try to make magic items more. Uh, flavorful, more characterful, not just, oh, this is a plus one sword. It, they have a note here where you say, oh, you can have a plus one sword, but that's boring. And finally we get a chapter called The White Curse, which is a sketch of a background setting. And with a city called Ode, or Ode, I don't know. And... Uh, yeah, there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, almost five pages of the setting. And then you get the adventures, which are laid out in, again, in a rather modern style. Uh, the first adventure is, is has this sort of um, mind map of how the different factions relate to each other, and that's what players have to navigate. And uh, the second one is more of a, uh, a chase, you might say. It's more of a wilderness. The first one is a city adventure, and the second is a uh, wilderness adventure. And as you can see, it's only the last actual text is on page 61. This is the, the terminology, and then comes the index. And we have the open game license on the last page. So saying it's 64 pages is even being generous. I mean, the game starts on page 5 and ends on 61. So it's more like 55, 56 pages. And it's yet still a complete game. It, it is, though, a game that requires an old school mindset where you are prepared to improvise a lot and to use the idea of rulings, not rules is taking an OSR uh, buzzword, uh, or rather, well, uh, catchphrase. Sorry. E what do I think about it? Is it playable? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, I, I could see myself running this. I would say the only major poor part where this game sort of veers away from the assumptions of old-style D&D is in the magic. The magic system is quite different. And that's something you'll have to get yourself as a GM and your players to understand if you want to run it. And the, the example setting given is uh, kind of grimdark, to be honest. It's not your usual uh, nice uh, feudal high fantasy setting. And I think those two things are connected. I mean, there is a sense of kind of dark humor running through the entire game. And um, as I said, the, the magic takes a toll on its users. And it's quite clear that you're not supposed to be slinging spells a lot in combat. So the wise character class actually is not as bad in combat as your you know, as your average magic user was in, in say, old school D&D, they can actually fight almost as well as the other uh, classes. Plus, they have the magic. So, the balance is a little different. 
But overall, I, uh, you know, I like a lot of the ideas here. I like a lot of the simplif simplification it's uh, done of uh, the old rules. And I, I like the, the, the modern approach to things such as skills and task roles. And it is very inexpensive. So, if you have an interest in old school role playing, I, you know, this is definitely a rule set you should pick up for inspiration, if nothing else. And I mean, as the word hack is in the name itself. So the author can't really complain if you hack it yourself. I mean, if if you like parts of this and dislike other parts, well, hack out the parts you like and, and you know, throw away the rest. And uh, combine and modify. That's the spirit of the thing. That's the, that's the old school spirit. So, if you found this review useful, you can comment and give it a thumbs up. But in any case, I will see you in my next video. Until then, this is Dakiyan, signing off.